All right, upon request, uh, uh, I've been asked to kind of go over, you know, some of our things that we've done with the boat and, uh, you know, just a little personal bits of, of we've done with it. And, uh, you know, what we have here, this is a Rebalo R200. Um, and uh, we bought it brand new. There's a lot of good things I like about it. And there's uh, some things I, I changed personally because it just makes things better. Uh, we fish a lot of current and um, you know run structure so having a you know good anchor is really important because we the one that came with the boat uh, we would it would drag a lot and our boat would start moving towards things that we didn't want it to and so we upgraded to the Bruce anchor and I got 15 uh, feet of uh, I believe 5 16 uh, chain here and uh, uh, I got tired of taking it in and out of the, the locker here so, you know, I've got the, uh, the anchor guide here, and then I'm, I, there used to, the light used to be right here. And uh, so I moved the lights over and uh, put a hole in the lid here so I can just let it in and out um, whenever I want without having to open this up because it's a pain in the butt. Um, and uh, but yeah, um, I added this uh, pop-up cleat right here so we can tie two which uh, makes things really easy and so that's what we've done to make it easier up here. Uh, plans of the future is a trolling motor. Uh, you know, we got these two rod holders here we added. This was a cup holder slash rod holder and these two rod holders uh, I put up here are for the, the tent we, uh, we made for the, the shade cover for here for the front for just either guests or the dogs or if we just need to get out of the sun and uh, usually we hide under the bridge when it gets a little too hot but if we're fishing and we don't want to go to the bridge uh, you know we, we have it here at our disposal to put up and one of the things about uh, the R200 is it's a small boat it's only a little over 20 feet and there's not a lot of storage on here so we had to get creative um, I was asking on the Rabala page uh, on Facebook uh, about this area right here and um, you know what could be underneath here and this this door didn't come we you know we bought it and I initially uh, was just I drilled like a hole in here just to, to see what was going to be in there and I was just going to cap it off if it wasn't useful but it turned out that there's a lot of space down here I've got uh, you know three fenders and uh, uh, a go bag and uh, some other storage and uh, there's a lot of extra room in there um, and it just drains to the back and but this is sealed so you know it doesn't get water in it when it's raining or anything so you know and it's nothing heavy or anything that's going to damage anything in there it's all soft stuff so you know it works uh, another thing we, uh, we use a lot is uh, the net and uh, initially at first we had just had this like velcro to the pole here um, but you know we were just pulling the velcro off and grabbing it and going and it was still getting hung up sometimes and everything so we just wanted something easy to get at so I bought these little clips and just velcro the clips to the pole and uh, just you know it's easy to grab and, and go and I did the same thing over here for the gaff. Uh, we don't really use the gaff very often, more to pick up trash than anything. But uh, you know, it's the same, just quick release. And uh, you know, I use double-sided Velcro a lot on this boat. It just, it's good for securing just about anything. All right, one of the things we like about the, I uh, really like about the uh, Rivalo R R200 is uh, actual usable head for this size boat um, you're not going to really find a head this size um, uh, we got a porta potty in here um, we got some tackle webs for storage and uh, I added this gas strut in here so this door doesn't swing on you while um, uh, you know somebody comes by or it's wavy or whatever and uh, we also put a shelf down here uh, so you can a little more storage in there and um, also there's uh, a JBL uh, amp I think it's like 600 watt amp or something I don't know the funny thing is like you know we thought we listened to a lot more music and we really 
hardly ever use the stereo that much um, especially because shooting video and stuff it, it would just be too loud and you know you would never hear anything so Kim has this little speaker you've probably seen it on the boat or heard it in the background um, sometimes going uh, but it doesn't interfere too much with the video so it's fine um, but uh, this is one of the biggest selling points so you know Another thing we use a lot is uh, sabiki rigs for getting bait, and um, it, uh, the big problem with sabiki rigs is, you know, they've got, you know, six hooks in them, and, like, what do you do with it when you're done with it? Um, it's, you know, if you ball it up or something, put it in a bag or, or whatever, you know, it's either, you know, throw it away or, you know, or it's going to get hung up on something. So, you know, we reuse them over and over again, especially when we go on, like, you know, along fishing trips and stuff. So... I uh, installed these, uh, I just put the, a couple of, you know, three quarter inch uh, PVC pipes right here and hang this little clip right here and uh, it's got still got the weight on it and everything and I just slide these in and out when I'm not using them and, um, you know, another, you know, necessity to, uh, pretty much on every boat with a, a tea top is a tea bag and uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, pains in the butts about the tea bag is it sags right here. If you've ever had one, you know, you know, you put stuff in there, it doesn't matter, it still sags a lot. So, what uh, I did was, uh, you know, I had a, some extra piece of starboard and I just cut a half inch piece of starboard to, to fit the same diameter in there. And I just make sure to round off the corners so it doesn't wear itself through the, the bag prematurely. But it keeps it nice and flat and it keeps things in there. Um, you know, well organized and, you know, you can just see better, so. One of the other things I didn't really care for about the R200 is the, the landing post that came with it. Um, uh, you know, so like basically all the seating in the back here is facing this way and as if you've been watching our channel, we fish a lot of current and everything, so most of our lines are going that way. Um, and so I got sick and tired of sitting over here to face this direction either that or you know if I was tired and wanted to sit down and type you know didn't want to stand I would sit in this, the jump seat and face this way and just try to keep keep a eye on my pole at the corner of my eye um, so we bought this thing um, god I forget the brand now but anyway it's a it's just a, a, a cooler with a swing back seat which is perfect for just laying it back this way and fishing back this direction and uh it's awesome because um you know it's just so much more comfortable and it gives so much more space back here get rid of those rod holders that i had to walk around over here and um you know it's less place for me to put my rod holders but i got plenty of rod holders in here so i'm not really worried about it the other thing is just easy to get at the stuff in the cooler so and it also made for great storage because i got tackle webs all the way around it to store stuff and to get th at things and easily so you know it was really nice and I just basically raised this up with a, a two by six uh, uh, plastic board and um, you know it's just bolted to the deck and which gives me a little bit more room back here some storage space underneath it and I can still access the the gas uh, tank, um, the hatch that's under there, and this is real easy to this is real easy to take off too. If I ever really need to get out and work on anything in there, but you know I can slide down, and uh, I got uh, you know a cast net in here, and you know uh, this is one of the most handy things in the world is one of these collapsible buckets. Um, if you don't have one of these on your boat, I highly recommend getting one. Uh, I used to throw all my tools, you know, uh, pliers and stuff in the, the rocket launcher rod holders in the back of the leaning post. And when I got rid of that, I needed somewhere to put my stuff. So I built this out of uh, uh, starboard. Just, you know, drill some holes in it and angled it and uh, get things nice and organized and out of the way. All right. Uh, another one of the drawbacks about uh, having, you know, like a, a V-hole boat 
is, uh, you know, it, um, you can't really go in shallow water too much because the motor sticks down way too far. So uh, we got this jack plate and, you know, it raises it about six inches. And uh, plus when you, we, we put the motor onto the plate, you know, there's several bolt holes on the, on the motor plate itself. So that, and we moved that up just about an inch and a half. So um, we can go a little bit of shallow water. We've been uh, cruising around a foot and a half of water, uh, getting bait, and uh, it really hasn't been a problem uh, with the motor all the way up. So that was a big help, um, especially since we don't have a trolling motor yet. And uh, you know, a lot of the intercoastal areas, uh, it gets real shallow real fast. And um, you know, if if we try to maneuver without before with the jack plate, before we had the jack plate, we would just you know tilt the motor up, and then the the motor shooting uh, the impeller shooting this way, and you have no steerage. You know, it's, you're just shooting water up, and so it just makes things really difficult. So this was a a big bonus, and we really love it. And we utilize it a lot, and. Um, it's, it's helped us out in a few jams and um, it's easier like when we have to take the, the puppies and to let them off the boat to go to the bathroom or something like that um, uh, you know we can get up to shorelines real easy uh, without worrying about digging the motor into the ground so that's a big bonus all right just to give you a quick overview of what we got going on here we have the Simrad go 9 it's got the side scan down scan and um, you know fish finder and charts and all that jazz and so that's been working real well for us and you know we added trim tabs on the back too and uh, those really help on the R200 you know you'll hear a lot back and forth in the forums and stuff but they seem to work well for us we enjoy it and then I just put the switch for the uh, jack plate over here for up and down and also I added this little USB charger up here, which we use, get a lot of use out of. So that's pretty much all the, you know, change we've done up here. All right, another big part of our, our boat um, that's kind of important is uh, we like to show our appreciation and uh, patriotism for this great country. So we always like to fl fly uh, glory up here. And we also fly the flag for our, our brothers in blue. Um, you know, I have somebody close to my life uh, that works for law enforcement, so I just want to show my support. All right. Now, probably the biggest improvement we made on our boat is um, these salty straight stickers that I uh, we had made and put on our engine. Each one of those stickers is good for at least 50 horsepower. So we're actually, you know, it says Yamaha 150, but we're actually running 250 horsepower out of this thing because I got a sticker on both sides. All right, well, thank you for uh, sitting through that. I hope it wasn't too painful. Um, if you have any questions or comments about uh, any of the modifications we've done on this boat um, and or just uh, any questions about the Riballo R200 in general itself, um, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, we'll see you guys on the water.